Okay, so hi everyone. The discussion of atomic line spectra is significant in the hypothesis of Bohr that each atom must be able to exist only on specific values of internal energy, which refers to the energy levels. It cannot have an energy somewhere in the middle of the two energy levels. Let's start. This is the outline of this video lecture. The origin of spectral lines for atoms was understood because of first, the concept of photons, and second, the concept of atomic energy levels. These two concepts were used by the Danish physicist uh, Niels Bohr in 1913. Uh, for example, we have this uh, electron shell or principal energy level, uh, maybe thought of as the orbit of one or more electron around certain atom's nucleus. Uh, a quantum mechanical system or a particle that is bound, uh, that is confined spatially, can only take on certain discrete values of energy and we call this one the energy levels. Uh, this is in contrast with the classical particles which can have any amount of energy. Isolated atoms of an element uh, have the same set of energy levels. On the other hand, atoms of different elements have different sets. In this picture, uh, we have different colors of light for each element. Here, we have uh, an electrical discharge tubes wherein their atoms are raised or becomes excited to a higher energy levels, commonly through inelastic collisions with electrons. It will emit a photon when an atom make a transition to a lower energy level. An atom can make a transition from one energy level to a lower level by the emission of a photon with an energy of emission equal to the energy difference between the initial and the final level as shown in this equation. And uh, we have this figure here. So initially, this smiling uh, electron is placed here, then it goes down to this final uh, energy level, so thus uh, releasing this amount of photon. Hydrogen was studied extensively being the simplest and least massive atom. A hydrogen electric discharge tube produced the spectral lines shown here above. The visible hydrogen emission uh, spectrum lines in the Balmer series, so we call this one the Balmer series. Uh, we're in this is our H alpha, which is the red line at the right, followed by H beta. We have next the H gamma, H delta, then we have the H uh, infinity. Uh, lines 5 and 6 here can be seen with the naked eye, but are considered to be ultraviolet as they have wavelengths less than 400 nanometers. Johann Balmer, through trial and error, found a formula that gives the wavelength of these lines, called the Balmer series. So this is the equation wherein we have the lambda here, refers to the wavelength, r is the Rydberg's constant, and your n is just an integer from 3, uh, 4, 5, and above. If your n is equal to 3, we get the wavelength of the h alpha. While if the value of n is infinity, we get the smallest wavelength. Using the hypothesis of Bohr regarding energy levels and the relationship E is equal to hc over lambda, we can derive the photon uh, energies for the wavelengths of the Balmer series. Thus, the initial energy is expressed as this, and the final energy is expressed with this equation. Note that these energies are negative because the potential energy is set to be zero when the electron and nucleus are infinity far apart. Also, uh, negative because it is bound. The Balmer series and the other series later, we will discuss those other series, suggest that hydrogen atom has a series of energy levels. And these energy levels, En, can be expressed as this in n is just an integer. Hcr here can be expressed numerically 
uh, using the value of your Planck's constant, the speed of light in a vacuum, then the ring burst constant. So we will have this final value in Joule. And this is the value in electron volt, 13.6. There are also other spectral series discovered for hydrogen, named after their discoverers. First is the Lyman series. Lyman is in the ultraviolet, while the next one we have the Paschen uh, series with this equation, and this is under the infrared. Next is the Bracket series, still under the infrared. Last series is the Fawn series, uh, still under the infrared. This spectral line series of hydrogen can be explained using the Bohr's hypothesis of transitions from one energy level to another electron orbit energy level. Okay, so in summary of the hydrogen spectral lines, we have these two figures here. Figure on the right shows the allowed orbits of an electron in the Bohr model of hydrogen atom, wherein the lines here shows the transitions responsible for some of the lines of our series. So we have the Lyman, we have the Balmer series, we have here the Paschen series. So on the other hand, we have this figure. Figure on the left shows the spectral lines for hydrogen atom divided into series. So we have here the again the various series and their alpha lines note that there are only a few atoms or ions that have spectra whose wavelengths can be represented by a simple formulation that we have shown previously and some of the examples includes hydrogen singly ionized helium and doubly ionized lithium shown uh, on the right we have here uh, atoms are representing the energy level of the atoms. Atoms have a lowest energy level that have the minimum internal energy state that the atom can possess and it is called the ground state level. All the, uh, the higher levels are called the excited levels. Energy levels for an electron in an atom, so the ground state and the excited state. And after absorbing energy, an electron may jump from the ground state going to a higher energy excited state. So with our previous discussion, we can now generalize that uh, a photon emitted when an atom makes a transition from the initial excited level going to the lower level. On the other hand, it can also be absorbed by a similar atom that is initially in the lower level going to the excited level. Shown in the drawing, uh, we have here an atom uh, lifted from an initial level to a higher final energy level by absorbing this photon here. In this picture, uh, we have the an absorbance spectrum of potassium permanganate and we can see this certain range of wavelengths that has significant absorbance. The absorbance uh, can be measured using a spectrophotometer or microplate reader, uh, which is an instrument that shines light of a specified wavelength through a sample and measures the amount of light that the sample absorbs. Hi there! Uh, if you have learned something in this video and like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, JP Academia, and uh, see you in the next video.